Would you turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47? We're in a series on Acts. We're going to continue that today. While you're turning there, imagine a life where you had everything you needed and most of what you really wanted. Imagine a life where you had all the money you needed for a living, for, for food and clothing and shelter. Imagine a life where you had supportive friends that just always had your back. They're always looking out for you. In fact, they, they're very sacrificial friends. Uh, imagine a life where you had a growing faith, where you had a real, meaningful purpose in life. It's not just a fairy tale. It's not just a fantasy. I just described the early church. That is what happens when the Holy Spirit comes into a group of people. He, he causes them to be that kind of people. And this, in Acts chapter 2, we're going to read about the great beginning. This was a great beginning. The church didn't just begin. It had a great beginning. And that's why we've called our series Great Beginnings. Jesus poured out his Holy Spirit on the church and we, we celebrated that uh, last week. We talked about that. And, and in fact, people uh, were baptized in the Holy Spirit last week. God, God is moving in our church just like he was in the early church. And in the early church, when Jesus poured out his Holy Spirit on the church, it was amazing. The crowds came running to them. We, we have this picture in mind that, oh, the Holy Spirit came and everybody ran out of the room and went to the streets to tell people that is not what the Bible says. What it says is, then the crowds came running. Wow, that is a great beginning. The Holy Spirit shows up. People come to see what is going on. 3,000 people got saved that day after Peter preached the very first spirit-filled message. And something revolutionary happened, and that's what I want to talk about today. And I'm calling the, the, this message, Forming a Community. Forming a community. I'm going to read that together. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. So all the believers devoted themselves. Someone say devoted themselves. Devoted. To what? To the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all. When's the last time you had a deep sense of awe? Well, a deep sense of awe came over all of them, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Wow, let's not pass over that lightly. That is revolutionary. <laughs> that does not happen by default with the human race. It's ex exactly the opposite. Verse 45, they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Wow. They worshiped together at the temple every seven days. Is that what it says? No. They worshiped together at the temple each day met in homes for the Lord's Supper. Communion was at home in a small group. And shared their meals with great joy and generosity. So it's not even begrudging sharing. It's happy sharing. It's joyful sharing. All the while, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord subtracted from their fellowship. Is that what it says? Are you paying attention? No. It says, each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Wow. That is a great beginning of the church. That is a great beginning. And it really struck me that it says the believers devoted themselves. I had to look up that word. I think I know what it means. It means they dedicated themselves. They committed themselves. They were devoted. They said, these things are high priority in my life. Yeah. High priority. And then he lists the four things. Teaching about Jesus. 
So they made the gathering where God's word was being preached and taught, they made that a very high priority. They devoted themselves to that. They were not casual about gathering together. They made another priority in their life, fellowship. And I don't know if you've ever heard this, this underlying root word. It's sometimes kicked around, koinonia. They devoted themselves to the koinonia, to the fellowship. And it's more than just Hi, how are you? Bye. It is, it is a, an association that it involves relationship and involvement. So they were involved with each other. That's that, that kind of fellowship, not just a casual fellowship. And then another, another, another thing they were devoted to, and this is one of my favorites, sharing meals. <laughs> they were like, bring the spaghetti. Bring the pork chops. We can have them now. No, not quite yet. That's going to be in Acts chapter 10. It's, it's coming. So no pork chops yet, but it's, it's on its way. And they were breaking bread. Like they were devoted to sharing meals. And I, and I picture that there were some people that said, man, we're doing a prime rib, like the six foot long one. So every, everybody come on over and we'll share it. There were others that, that said, you know what? All we got is bologna. And I mean bulk bologna. The kind you cut with a knife. That's all we got. And some crackers. And come on over because we want to share them anyway. That's what I picture, like, from the high to the low, all, all they were sharing. They, but listen, it wasn't just a casual, let's have dinner sometime, yeah, maybe in late 2024. No, it's not like that. It was like, we are making this a priority. Yeah. And then the last one that they devoted themselves to was prayer. Literally, prayers. So they, they, they said, man, this is our top priority. Now, here's the really amazing thing. No one preached that at them. Right. The reason they made that a whole uh, priority was because the Holy Spirit was poured out on them, and they were changed. Yeah. It was not life as normal anymore. Now, instead of hoarding, they're sharing. It is like it's a whole different Thing. And they all came together around these four priorities. And so I have a couple of truths, uh, truths to share with you today. The first one is this. Shared devotion deepens relationships. So true. Shared devotion deepens relationships. When a group of people are all devoted to the same thing, they, if they share a passion, they share a commitment, they share a dedication, it deepens relationships. We talked about uh, a few weeks ago how time plus conversation plus a shared activity equals, do you know what? Do you remember? Equals fr 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 friendship. Friendship, yeah. We had our grandkids over this weekend. And so there were a few times like that. I was just, I was feeding them the line just so, so they would get it right when I asked, you know. So when, when you have, when there's a group of people that have a shared commitment, a shared devotion, that deepens friendships, relationships. So now as a result, what I just read in the, in the Acts 2 passage, as a result of those four priorities, as a result of the Holy Spirit's work in them, some things happened. And as a result, the believers experienced a deep sense of awe. And I believe had they not been devoted to these things, to the teaching, to the worship, to all, all that stuff, they would not have experienced this deep sense of awe because there would not have been signs and wonders. They, the believers experienced praise and worship. That was a result. So like God is doing this thing in us. We're hearing the teaching. We're encouraging each other. We're part of a community that's amazing. And they began to praise and worship the Lord. It just like they were so excited about what was going on here that they said, we're giving you praise. We're giving you glory, Lord. Another result was the believer's generosity. And I, I, I can't make this up. I mean, it says like three or four times in different ways. They just shared. They shared. They shared. They shared their food. They sold their property. They were like, I got to liquidate this so I can share some, some money with you because I see that you're in need. Yeah. Wow. That was a result like they sold their house and said, I could live in something smaller. Oh, wow. wow, or I could just be in a tent. I don't know what they did. It's awesome. And then another result of all this was the believers experienced goodwill of all the people. 
They experience goodwill. So like today, what do you think the, ch- the, the world outside the church, what is their view of the, of the church? I was all like, oh, we love the church. <laughs> okay, so something's missing. Something's missing that they had in the early church, and they were oppressed by Rome. It's not like, oh, there was just easy there. It was not easy there. It was not easy at all there. And still, when God was working in them, they changed what they did and what they emphasized and what they focused on, and God did something in them. And everyone around said, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Wow. I want to be a part of a community like that. And here's my second truth today. Extravagant generosity attracts others. Yeah. Extravagant generosity attracts others. When you take your weekend and help someone move that doesn't have any help, that's generosity. Yeah. That is attractive to others. They say, wow, that's, that's how you treat others? So the church was together. Man, they were making meals happen. Did I mention that before? <laughs> Ribeye, bulk bologna. They were, they were making it happen. They were uh, worshiping together. They were selling and donating. And then, then they collected those funds, and they had to be administrated. And who needs Oh, yeah, you need it. Come on over. Uh, they, were, they were helping the poor. So the, the church, uh, it, 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 it was happening and I just noticed that everybody put so much into it. And at the same time, everybody got so much out of it. Yeah. Wow, that is awesome. And if, if I could summarize this message, what, I, what I'm seeing from this passage today, it's this, this way. Deeply engaging with the church enriches your life. Yeah. Deeply engaging with the church enriches your life. Yeah. Deeply engaging with the church enriches your life. We sometimes feel like our lives have, are barren. We sometimes feel like, wow, everything's not going how I want it, or it's, I don't have a lot of joy or whatever. And maybe the missing piece is deep engagement with the church. Yeah. Now, I feel like as pastor that I'm deeply engaged with the church, and yet I feel like the Holy Spirit has been stretching me in a number of areas regarding this. And I want to be deeply engaged with the church. I I want to have an enriched life, and that's what I want for you. I want you to experience that. I want me to experience it. But one big thing for us today, it's the number one thing. It's almost like become a badge of honor. Even though it's negative, we say it a little braggadociously. Well, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. Oh, man. How have you been? I haven't seen you for a long time. I've been busy. Me too. What a strange coincidence. We're all busy. That is crazy. I did not see that coming. You're busy? I am too. We have so much in common. That's awesome. But really, there's two main reason slash excuses today for not doing something of any kind, going to a concert, being deeply engaged with the church. There's, there are a couple of main excuses that are given, and one is that I don't have enough time. Oh, oh, I don't think I'm going to have time for that. And the other one is I don't have any extra money for that. So for those two reasons, a lot of times we just say, oh, I can't do this thing or that thing. Your friends say, hey, come on, let's go to this concert, this event, this activity. Well, I don't have time. I'm working extra. Or or, I don't have enough money. So we we say, in other words, I'm too busy or that's too expensive. But here's the interesting thing. And now I'm preaching to the choir because as I point to you, three fingers are pointing at me and one is up at God saying, God, help. When, when, here, here's the revelation, and I, I know this might be a spoiler alert for some of you. Everybody has the same amount of time, yeah. 24 hours a day. Literally, everyone, this is the, the great equalizer. Everybody has the same amount of time. Everybody. The busiest and the boredest. Everybody has 24 hours a day. Yeah. Every single one of us. So the issue is not time. 
The issue is priority. It's not an issue of time. It's not an is- that's not the issue. It's an issue of priority. And here's another spoiler alert. And I think this is a blind spot for many of us. You always find the money for what's your top priority. Always. You always do. Because if you have any money, you have spent it on something. And if it was only on one thing, that was your top priority. So it's possible that an extra hot, tall, skinny, soy, chai, uh, dirty, extra pumps of chocolate latte was your choice. But then that means that was, your, that was your top priority then. So the issue really isn't money. It's priority. And I'm talking about the issue that prevents us from deeply engaging with the church. Yeah. It's not that you don't have enough time, because you do. You have the exact same amount of time as me. It's not that you don't have enough money, because we're always going to find the money for what's our most important thing. The issue is priority. And there's so many things that you could invest or spend your time on, and those are two different words, invest or spend your time on. There's so many different things you could invest or spend your money in, but not many of them truly satisfy. Not many of them actually enrich your life. I cannot tell you how many things we have bought over uh, 30 some years of marriage. I cannot tell you how many places we have gone hoping to be satisfied and they did not satisfy because those are not the things that really enrich your life. The things that really enrich our lives are things like investing a couple hours with the grandkids. That actually enriched our lives. The things that enrich our lives are being with the church, being with someone from the church and seeing them get freed up. That enriches our lives. Like that never disappoints. Those times when I've come into into a, a, a gathering of the church and I did not feel like worshiping because I was tired or sick or whatever and I chose to do it anyway, that was enriching. Because... At that time when I thought, oh, I can barely get up to you, God, God says, I know, and I see that hand, and I'm coming down to you right now, (laughs) and he was there. That's enriching in life. Deeply engaging with the church enriches your life. That is based on Acts 2, 42 to 47. I'm not making this up. It's not because, like, I'm I'm the pastor, so I got to say this or that. That's not the thing. It's the Bible. (laughs) The Holy Spirit had it written down, and he orchestrated it. It is how God set things in motion. Deeply engaging with the church enriches your life. You want to have an enriched life? Deeply engage. Deeply engage. And the church is one person sitting beside you, and it's the whole group. It's both. Deeply engage with the church. So this passage that I read in the Bible, Acts 2, 42 to 47, that is my vision for the church. I could just stop right there. That, like, if we could just be that, if I could be that, like, if I could participate like that, if I could engage like that, if you could engage like that, wow. I didn't write that that vision. It actually happened in real life 2,000 years ago. But there there are three practical things that that passage inspires in me, that I just want to want to focus it and hone it in for our church on this vision day. So three things, three areas of focus for us in the coming year. The first one is this, that every one of you would have a life-changing experience with the Holy Spirit that is ongoing. That's my vision for you this year, that every, literally every one of you, not just like some, but Literally every one of you would have a life-changing experience with the Holy Spirit that is ongoing. That you would actually live baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, In some of my research for the messages, I saw this phrase and it really just jumped off the page to me. Let's not say I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's just something that happened one day. Let's say 
I am baptized in the Holy Spirit. In other words, baptized in means immersed in, surrounded by, flowing in through me, all over me. I am baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's what I want for you. I want you to live baptized in the Holy Spirit. And as I mentioned, people last, last Sunday were baptized in the Holy Spirit. There are some that are still seeking, and it's going to happen. Yeah. It is. Because why would I say that? It's the promise of the Father. Amen. That's why. And God keeps his promises. So it is going to happen, just a matter of when. But I, 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 along with this, along with this, my vision is that you would live set free. Amen. Set free from strongholds. And we are, we are really focusing on that. We've, we've already started on Sunday nights with Living Set Free. And it is, it is so good. And we're seeing God do things in our lives every single Sunday night. Uh, we won't be gathering tonight because of all the meetings today and stuff. But every night, every night that we gather... And we are, we are like, just we're going for it. We're, we're, not, we're not holding back. We're not shrinking back. We're just saying strongholds are coming down. Yeah. So some that we've already attacked, passivity, a religious spirit, and there's, there's I think a third one, and unbelief. Wow, those are great ones to start with. We're pulling those things down in our lives, and now we recognize them when, when they try to pop back up. We go, no, no, well, I've torn that down. No, I, I believe <laughs> Yes, that, that God, that you would love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's our vision for you this year. That, that you would have a life-changing experience with, with God, with his Holy Spirit that's ongoing, that, that would fill you with love, love for God. That you would, no one would ever have to encourage you to worship or pray because you would just be like counting the minutes until the next time. When do I get to worship? When do I get to pray? When do I get to be with God's people? Because you have such a love for God. That is our vision for you this year. That God would be your top priority. Not a priority. Not a Sunday morning thing, but that just God would be your top. Number one priority. And our theme for this year, we've been preaching about it every Sunday, so I'm actually going to spend the least amount of time on this point. But our theme for this year is seeking God's presence and power. And so we, we've, been, we've been talking about it every week, for weeks and weeks. And we're going to keep, keep emphasizing that. We need an ongoing experience and encounter, an ongoing encounter with the Lord. Okay, so a second part of vision for the coming year is that every one of you, not surprising, would have a life-changing engagement with your church. So this is not just me like, oh, I think this would be nice. This is Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47, because I want to live in a place where we have a, a deep sense of awe, where there's incredible, attractive sharing. And I, I, I just want, I want to be a part of that. I, I want you to be a part of that as well, because community flows from encounter. Yeah. Community, it just flows out from encounter. No one had to tell the early church, hey, you need to be caring for each other. They encountered the Holy Spirit, and they started caring for one another. It just, yeah. it flows from it. They were serving, sharing, praying, giving, eating, sharing their meals, giving together. And because we are better together. We are. We're better together. And we have experienced that. There are no lone rangers in the church. No lone rangers in the church. And, you know, that has at least a double meaning, if not more. For one thing, I just want to say, there is no need for you to be lonely or isolated in the church. There is no need. Sometimes you or I isolate ourselves, but there is no need for anyone to be isolated. This, uh, in particular, our congregation, we are a very accepting, very diverse group of people. Like, there is no reason to feel isolated. The only reason you would is if you are choosing to be a lone ranger. Lone ranger comes late, leaves early, doesn't come to Sunday nights or prayer. That's what a lone ranger does. And if you do that, then you might feel isolated. I get it, but there's no need for that. I want to invite you, come in, <laughs> engage. A second meaning of no lone rangers in the church is that no one person can make the church succeed. I cannot do it. And because of my, my temperament and gift mix, I kind of have tried in some ways. Uh, and I can't. I, I can't. It's, it's bigger than me. 
there's no one person that can make it succeed. We have to have each other. And I, I just know as I think about life-changing engagement with your church, COVID has had a big impact on us in this. It just has. For uh, almost two years now, we've not been able to see each other in the face. I, I'm so embarrassed to say that uh, there was a family that was coming to our church that uh, they didn't come every Sunday, but they came frequently. And every time they came, their, their masks were on. I said, oh, have I met you before? They said, Pastor, yeah, we, we told you our names last week. Because of masks. Like, I just, I try. I, I, I mean, like, I really put some effort. I even met, write notes in my phone. I try. But with masks, it is really hard to know people and to even recognize them. There, 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 I can remember one guy in our, in our uh, small group that I, 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 I saw him take off his mask to have snacks one time, and I just went, oh, oh, that's what you look like. <laughs> because with his eyes, I just sort of pictured a certain thing, and I'd never seen him without a mask. Yeah. So that has been hard, but I know that COVID was just a layer. There was COVID, but before COVID, there was Cascadia. And that is a general mindset in our area of the country where we don't need nobody. We are independent. And in fact, I think I'll go ahead and customize my religion as well. That's the mindset of Cascadia. So we already had Cascadia working against us, and then we threw masks on. And it is, I, I'm just going to tell you, it has, been, it has been harmful to community in our congregation and in every other congregation. It's been, it has been harmful. And so, uh, man, I, we have a lot to overcome. But hashtag worth it, worth it to overcome in order to be able to deeply engage with your church. In church, in general, not just our church, in any church, and I have been a part of churches, I, I've been credentialed since 1982, so that's many years now, 40 years, uh, I, I've been credentialed, and I served in the church before I was credentialed or licensed as a minister, and in any church I've been a part of, I have found the exact same principle, and it is found in Acts 2, 42 to 47, the number one way to feel like you belong in a church. The number one way to have friends uh, and people who will notice if you're gone for two weeks. The number one way to have friends like that. The number one way to have friends that want to help you when you move. The number one way to have friends who want to bring you a meal when you had surgery and you're recovering. The number one way to have people who have your back in prayer, the number one, it is, it is, it is better than any other way. It is it's more effective than any other way. The number one way is to serve together. Yep, so true. Yep. All of my closest friends are people I serve with. I have lots and lots of friends. I'm friends with everybody. I love everybody. But the ones who actually know me a little bit, are people I serve with because while you're handing out popcorn at the event, you chat with the person next to you and you, you have some time and you get, it's, it is just a glorious sidelight, um, ripple effect of, of being together. So the number one way to deeply engage with your church is to serve together. It is the way. Worship band, do you feel like you know your drummer? Yes, because you serve together. That's right. You're doing a Bible challenge together because you serve together. You, I doubt that you would have been doing that had you not been serving together. Like, it just is a ripple effect when you serve together. So I want to encourage you to step up in this and to engage with others through serving together. We have so many just super easy <laughs> ways to serve every Sunday. Nursery, security team, kids church, uh, outreach, band and uh, worship band, the tech booth, practical things like facilities, grounds, laundry, all those things are weekly things that need to be done at our church. And I encourage you to try different teams until you find a team you love. Uh, an event team is also a very valid way. It's not a weekly thing, but that's very valid to serve in events. That's very important. But would you, would you hear me? I'm going to say something I haven't said before. So find a team you love and serve on it. Okay. 
But beyond that, I want to ask every person to rotate through the nursery. Because if we do that, we would all need to serve two to four times per year. As it is, that's not how it is. <laughs> it's the same people who serve every two or three weeks. So if we all, including me, I'm going to be serving in the nursery after Easter. If we all serve in the nursery, if we just take a turn and by the way, there's a whole process. We're going to do a 90-second background job. We're going to, all that stuff. But if we all who can serve in the nursery once or twice this year, oh my goodness, here's the difference it would make. All of a sudden, we can confidently minister to every young family who comes. They're the only group that cannot serve themselves. So our ushers come from this group. We are, serving, we are ushering ourselves but the nursery, they cannot. They cannot serve themselves. And so it's mission critical to our church. You want to deeply engage with your church? Go talk to Pastor Tori. Don't wait for her to come to you and say, sign me up. Yeah. I'm serving. That would move. Our church would like, would just go like crazy. Are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? Okay. Hmm. Do it. Do it. <laughs> um, I realize, okay, okay, I know, I know where it is now. I know where it is. So, ushers, could you just go to the usher's closet? And there are two black buckets with something to hand out. And I realized I never told you that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cool to hand those out now. Yes, and they're doing it. I love it. So the church is like one of those rowing teams. Yeah. And go ahead and just come on to the front and, uh, and begin passing them out and then and head to the back. And maybe uh, what you could do is, if there's enough room, um, yeah, I'll let you figure it out. I'll let you figure it out. Just go for it. <laughs> Let's pass them. All right. All um, right. We, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever seen them compete, but I've seen them over by UW uh, in the, what is that, in Lake Washington there. And these guys, they're, they're, there's a guy or a person in the back yelling, stroke, 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 stroke. And every single oar hits that water at exactly the same time, at exactly the same depth. And they can just shoot through the water and win races. But if one person does not have their oar in the water, the boat starts turning a different direction. Even one person that's not rowing. If two people are not rowing, they lose the race, for sure. There's no way you can win because you don't have all your oars in the water. We are a church that wants to have all our oars in the water. So I'm handing out to you an oar. Not or the conjunction <laughs> or the rowboat thingy. <laughs> so when we all have our oars in the water, what happens is everything gets done and we move forward. So we, we're excited to get the remodel done this year. That's one of the, one of the things we're going to tackle this year. And I've got uh, just some fresh drawings to show you. We, we, we are about ready to have a new kids' wing. Yes, thank you, Jesus. We're about ready to have add, add restrooms to the place. We're going to add a kitchen to the place that's actually big enough to walk into. Uh, and on the next slide I'm going to show you, we're going to have a new youth chapel. That will also be able to be used for other things as well. We'll have an updated exterior. We'll have an updated interior. And I'm going to talk more about it. And I'm going to give you your own copy of those drawings in the annual meeting coming up today. So we have a vision to update certain areas on our own. The, the restrooms, it's on us, not the contractor. A lot of the finishing work is going to be on us. Uh, cleaning up after the contractor every Friday or Saturday, 
on us. All those things so that we can get the contractor to do as many things for us as possible that only he can do. So we're going to be looking for volunteers to work and serve uh, and leaders to manage teams. Now, wouldn't it be cool if instead of having the same three people work every Friday for six months, wouldn't it be cool if we all just said, I'll do it once, and then every couple of months we come down and we have the joy of serving together, and then our rowboat is going to be shooting through the water and getting her done. As we serve together, you will find that shared devotion deepens relationships. You will find that. And I got to say, it's been so cool recently. I, I just started thinking about who are, who are some people who just recently have started serving in different ways. And I, I, I actually came up with a big list, and I don't even think I got them all. Uh, and it is really cool just to see our congregation kind of flourishing. Yeah. So I, I hope you don't hear any kind of haranguing or, 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 I don't know, beating you up or something today. I just, I just want to see every oar in the water so we're all having a deep uh, engagement with our church and deep relationships. Our church had a core group many years ago. It was a core group. They did everything. They made it happen. Well, a new for core group is forming today, yeah. and I can see it before my very eyes, yeah. and it's very exciting. Yeah. We are forming a community. Yeah. Yes. We are. So I just began to think of who are some recent examples of people I've just seen step up. Uh, Tony stepped up to say, we need translation so that uh, people who only speak Spanish can be ministered to in our services. That is an awesome idea. So we got it. We got, we have a, we have a, we got a translation, and we're, we're just like barely getting it off the ground, but we have those units that we needed because someone said we need that. Uh, Robert, every Sunday morning, is the one who puts the sign out so that people can find us and they can figure out which driveway to come into. And, and because we're in an area with high um, transient activity, all, there, uh, there's been one, uh, one person in particular. We have them on video. We know who it is. There's been one person in particular who has done a lot of bad stuff <laughs> around our property. And Robert comes Sunday morning to make sure that debris is cleared away so there are no obstacles to someone finding Jesus today. That is awesome. <laughs> I think about Jason, new broadcast director, doing something he's never done before, doing a great job. I think about Jordan on drums. He did not even know how to play drums. And he just said, you know what? I see we need a drummer. I will go pay for lessons myself and go take them. And he started playing drums. And now our worship has life and energy that we were missing. I think of Michelle, service host. Oh, my goodness. I think we might have had to drag her up a little bit. It's a little outside her comfort zone, but she has done such a great job. And we saw something in her she did not see in herself. I think about Jerry and Shelly. And actually, this one is a long list, so I can't even list everything they're doing. <laughs> but right now, Jerry and Shelly are serving in the nursery. I think it might be their first time. It is, so that other young moms can be in this service. That is amazing. Do Jerry and Shelly have a passion for that? I think not. But, th but what they do have a passion for is deeply engaging with our church. And they said, I'm in, Pastor, whatever you need, I will do it. I didn't even say nursery, they just did it. They are being trained for kids' church so that they can rotate through. Not so they can do it every Sunday, but so they can rotate through. And, and they're going to find that they have gifts they didn't know, and they're going to find that they are deeply enriched in relationship. Yeah. That's what is, it's going to happen. Uh, uh, I think of Terry and Gail setting up coffee and donuts today, and I love it. And, and they said, we know how to do that. We could do that. And in fact... The reason we have donuts and coffee today was because they suggested it. And we didn't even think of it. And we said, that is an awesome idea. Because they had their oar in the water. Yeah. And you see, it was just such a little thing. 
But all these little things add up to make us an awesome church. And it, it adds up to make you engaged so that you actually have relationships and someone has your back. We have a vision to add an early childhood ministry class. We, we don't have one currently. We only have nursery and kids church. It would be so awesome to have a three, four, fives. And we're going to build a room for them. So I cannot wait. We have a vision to add a second service. And that, it's funny, it freaks out some of our leaders as well as excites them <laughs> because they think, oh, wow, I needed four, time, four, four nursery teams per month. Now I need eight nursery teams per month. But the cool thing is you could serve in nursery and go to the other service. So it's, really, it's a really kind of a cool win-win. And more services, more options, more people can find a time that works for them to come and worship. Wow, so great. I have a vision to add some more elders. We only have one right now, but some more elders for pastoral care and for prayer. Third vision point. Ooh, dear. I told you I'm not cutting anything out. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Part of the vision for this year, that every one of you would cultivate a life-changing love for your neighbors as yourself. That's Bible. I did not write this stuff. Yeah. I cannot come up with stuff this good. That you would cultivate a life of life, a, 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 a life-changing love for your neighbors. You have 80,000 neighbors just in Auburn alone, uh, around 3.2 million in Puget Sound area. So we have, we have a lot of neighbors, so it's a little overwhelming. So we need to to focus our vision. So we have a vision to focus on sharing Jesus with the people of the Auburn School District, staff, parents, and students. That's still a big chunk. <laughs> and we've already got a really good start on that. Why would we do that? Well, we are uniquely positioned. I'm going to show you a map of our area. At, at, at this location, we're within a half a mile of the Auburn School District offices, Washington Elementary, Auburn High School, and, by the way, our former, our previous location. So I, I meant to bring my laser pointer and I forgot it in my office. Um, at the upper left is where we are, the yellow dot, upper left. And then right below that, coming towards the center, it says former NFC location. That's where we moved from when we went up, when we went up on the hill. No, right, right prior to going up on the hill. We were downtown a couple blocks away from where we are right now. I have a feeling God has some unfinished work for us to do yeah. right here in this place. Yeah. All our most successful outreaches have been to kids and families. We just, that's our sweet spot. It's our anointing from God. And so we've, we meet practical needs and, uh, uh, and also the, the, the need for just free family activities in our area. So even if you don't have kids, which I don't have kids at home, even if you don't have kids, raise your hand if you were once a kid. Okay, so we can all relate. We can all relate. So we can leverage our building, our resources, our skill at kids events to share Jesus. And I'm excited to announce that this year we are going to be transitioning Tori, Director Tori Sherry, Children's Director, to Children's and Outreach Pastor. Yeah, that's very exciting. So she'll, she'll still be part-time initially, but she's going to be focused on that. She is almost done with her credentialing. And so when she is, I'll make a formal announcement. But I'm just so excited about this because it is a big part of our vision that we'll have a staff member actually devoted to those two areas, children and outreach. That's awesome. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to have the fastest turnaround ever between services. It's going to be awesome. Ooh, we can do it. We're fast eaters. Early church, they ate all the time. So we'll eat our lunch really quickly and we'll, we'll just start. All right, I want to ask you to pray with me about these three things. Would you, would you close your eyes or get yourself into a prayer posture? And this is what I want to ask you to do. Three different hand positions. So the first one, would you put your hands up to God? Just put your hands up to God. And let's, church, let's just call out for 30 seconds for the presence and power of God. Go. God, we just we call out to you, Lord God. 
we want you, Lord God, more than anything else. There is nothing more important than you. You are our top priority, Lord God. It's you we want, Lord God. We want the manifest presence of God. Lord, we want the manifest presence of God. We want to experience you. We want to hear your voice. We want to see you do signs and wonders. We want to see you save our neighbors and our families. We want you. We want you, your presence, your power. Every time we gather, that we could not wait to come and be in your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name. And now would you put your hands towards the center aisle, actually towards each other, but just toward, face towards the center aisle. Stretch your hands out to the other side of the church. There you go. So it's towards each other. Let's pray for each other. Let's pray that we would be an engaged church. All right? So just pray for the person in front of you. Let's go. Let's pray. Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, in Jesus' name, for engagement like we've never experienced at a new level, Lord God where we have deep relationships, Lord God, where people know our name, where people know what we're missing. Lord God, we pray that we would be an engaged church, that I would be an engaged person, that the people around me would be engaged. Lord God, I pray that we, our relationships would, would be so deep that our, our boat would be moving through the water so fast. Lord, I just pray we'd be deeply engaged. Lord God, and at the end of this year, that we would love each other, that we would share with each other, that we would serve each other, and that we would see you do great things. I pray that a deep sense of awe would come over our church, and that we would see miraculous signs and wonders, Lord, as we are engaged. And then one more direction, everybody, would you face out? Face north, or face south, or face west, or face east. Just pick a direction and go out. Out. So face out to the community. Just stretch your hands out towards the community. Let's just pray for a great awakening. Let's pray for our 80,000 neighbors to know Jesus. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, from the north to the south, from the west to the east, Lord God, we call forth people to come and put their faith in Jesus. We call them forth, Lord God. And Lord, we pray for our neighbors, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we would know them that we would love them, and that we would share Jesus with them. And Lord, I pray for a great awakening, that this would no longer be known for Cascadia, that this, this area would be known for salvation, for healing, for deliverance, for Holy Spirit baptisms, for spirit-filled work. Lord, may that be what our reputation of, this, of the Southeast Puget Sound be for, Lord. And use us to be a part of it, I pray. In Jesus' name. And one final prayer. I don't let any service go by without just inviting you to put your faith in Jesus. Whether you're in the room, whether you're watching live, or whether you're watching later. I invite you to, to put your faith in Jesus. How do you become a Christian? Turn away from your sin. All that stuff that separates you from God. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead. That's how. Do you want to do that today? Is this your day to put your faith in Jesus to become a Christian? Would you bow your heads again, everybody? If it's your day, would you raise your hand? And a hand raised just says, Pastor, pray for me. Today's my day. I'm putting my faith in Jesus. I'm becoming a Christian. And I'd love to just coach you in a prayer. Would you all repeat after me? And if you're praying, it, praying this prayer, pray it to Jesus today. Let's go. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. So please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you starting now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, we applaud you. And I just want to ask you, would you please let me know if you prayed that prayer today, on the bottom of the Connect card, there's a box to check. Would you just check that box and make sure you hand it to an usher or just put it in the offering box? And I'd like to know and applaud you. God bless you, everybody. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Garrett. It's so cool that the vision for our church in the future is getting back to the church's roots. It's going back. We're looking back to the Church of Acts. We're saying that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Amen. Who else is excited? Yeah. Amen. All right. <laughs> Okay, so I got, I got a few things because, you know, we got to transition quick, but transition efficiently into the annual meeting. <laughs> so first thing, um, it, members, um, please stay for the annual meeting. If you are, on, but um, non-members, you're also welcome to attend if you'd like. Um, parents, you can, fee you can feel free to leave your kids in the nursery or with... 
yeah, it's easier because then they're like, mommy, daddy, you know, please take me with you. But you can if you want, but, you know, it's easier if you leave them in the nursery or the kids. They will be fed. They will be taken care of, et cetera. Um, number two, please, everyone, help set up tables and chairs for the lunch, lunch and meeting. Jerry Cole, he will be coming in here. He's going to be running that whole thing. But we need everyone's help because we're going to be moving all these chairs out, putting tables in, getting ready for lunch. Number three, members... Once we're done setting up tables and chairs, please sign in on the roster. If you don't sign in, you can't vote. So please sign in. Number four, lunch is provided. Praise the Lord. <laughs> lunch is provided for um, anyone who's staying for the meeting. So you're welcome to partake in that. We're, we're going to have that after we're all set up. Once again, it was so good to see you all in person and online. God bless you. See you next week.